Happy to help Thwaites. Do you have any regrets about Great. sacking Thanks. staff, sir? Yeah? The chief executive of P&O came armed with an apology. MPs barely gave him the chance to make it. The company's behaviour has caused outrage. The first question set the tone. Are you in this mess because you don't know what you're doing or are you just a shameless criminal? Before I answer that question, can I start, please, with an apology to um, the seafarers that were affected on Thursday last week? An apology to their families. P&O fired almost 800 crew without warning last week and is hiring cheaper agency workers to replace them. The company should have consulted staff and unions in advance, but didn't. MPs wanted to know if P&O had knowingly broken the law. I completely hold our hands up, my hands up, our hands up, that we did choose not to consult. That's quite amazing, isn't it? You're coming to this parliament and putting your hands up and saying you willfully chose to break the law. Believe it. We did not believe that there was any other way to do this, no and we are compensating people in full. Peter Hebblethwaite said the average P&O crew member was earning £36,000 a year before they were sacked and will receive £46,500 in compensation. P&O is paying new agency recruits an average of £5.50 an hour, less than the minimum wage, which we calculate means they'll earn around £11,000 a year if they work full time. Hebblethwaite told MPs his basic salary is £325,000 a year before bonuses. Maybe take a pay cut. In Dover, some of those dismissed by P&O watched Hebblethwaite give evidence. The company insists it would have gone bust had it not taken action to halve its wage bill. And his crocodile tears apology was absolutely disgusting. There's zero remorse, and you could see that by his sheer arrogance. P&O wants to get sailing again, but its ships must pass safety inspections first, and seven of them remain stuck in port. In Dover's Western Dock, agency staff have been training to use the emergency evacuation systems. Spirit of Britain is registered in Limassol. It's a reminder that P&O trades on international waters away from UK jurisdiction. The government plans to take legal action against P&O, but it isn't really clear how UK law applies in this case. P&O's crews were employed by companies in Jersey on contracts issued in Jersey to work on vessels that were registered in the Bahamas, Bermuda and Cyprus. Peter Hebblethwaite admits P&O broke UK laws, but we don't know to what degree the company is bound by them. He told MPs that some P&O customers have cancelled bookings, but he says the company now has a chance of survival. Joel Hills, News at 10.